Dark oxygen is generated by the depths of the ocean floor. Greetings everyone. Today's video focuses on a fascinating subject. The surprising revelation that the deep ocean floor is capable of generating its own oxygen. Challenging the long-held belief that only photosynthetic organisms are responsible for Earth's oxygen production. It has been discovered that polymetallic nodules found on the ocean floor can produce oxygen through a natural process known as the geobattery. This discovery carries significant implications for deep sea mining as these nodules contain essential elements for batteries and support the existence of deep sea life. However, it is important to exercise caution considering the negative impact that past mining activities have had on marine biodiversity. Now, without any further delay, let us begin our discussion. Contrary to widely accepted beliefs that oxygen is solely produced by photosynthetic organisms like plants and algae, a recent and unexpected revelation has emerged. This revelation suggests that there might be an alternative method for oxygen generation. Surprisingly, it seems that oxygen can also be generated at the seafloor, an environment devoid of any light that would typically sustain aerobic sea life reliant on oxygen. On Monday, July 22nd, the study was officially published in the esteemed journal Nature Geoscience. During ship-based fieldwork in the Pacific Ocean, Andrew Sweetman from the Scottish Association for Marine Science, SAMS, stumbled upon the revelation of dark oxygen. The explanation for this discovery is potentially clarified through electrochemistry experiments led by Franz Geiger from Northwestern University. The initiation of aerobic life on Earth necessitated the presence of oxygen, and it has long been believed that photosynthetic organisms were responsible for its production, according to Sweetman, the leader of the seafloor ecology and biogeochemistry research group at SAMS. However, Recent discoveries have revealed that oxygen is actually generated in the depths of the ocean, where light is absent. This new knowledge prompts us to reconsider inquiries such as, where might the origins of aerobic life lie? At the core of this finding lies polymetallic nodules, which are naturally occurring mineral deposits that develop on the seabed. Ranging in size from minuscule particles to an average potato, these nodules consist of a diverse array of minerals. According to Geiger, one of the co-authors of the study, the polymetallic nodules responsible for oxygen production also contain valuable metals like cobalt, nickel, copper, lithium and manganese. These metals are essential components in batteries. In recent times, numerous mining companies have set their sights on extracting these valuable elements from the seafloor, which lies at depths ranging from 10,000 to 20,000 feet beneath the surface. It is crucial that we reconsider our approach to mining these resources in order to avoid depleting the oxygen supply for deep sea organisms. At Northwestern's Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences, Geiger holds the prestigious Charles E. and Emma H. Morrison Professorship of Chemistry. Additionally, he is affiliated with the International Institute for Nanotechnology and the Paula M. Trinan's Institute for Energy and Sustainability. During an expedition to collect samples from the seabed of the Clarion Clipperton Zone, a vast underwater ridge spanning approximately 4,500 miles in the northeastern part of the Pacific Ocean, Sweetman stumbled upon a remarkable finding. Initially, when his team detected the presence of oxygen, he immediately suspected that their equipment had malfunctioned. Upon receiving this data, our initial assumption was that there must be a malfunction with the sensors. This is because all previous research conducted in the depths of the ocean has consistently shown oxygen consumption rather than production. Despite our attempts to recalibrate the sensors after each expedition, these peculiar oxygen measurements persisted over the span of a decade. In our pursuit of innovation, we made the decision to implement an alternative backup approach that operated in a distinct manner from the optode sensors we had been utilizing. Upon receiving identical outcomes from both methods, we realized that we had stumbled upon a truly groundbreaking and previously unconsidered discovery. During the summer of 2023, Sweetman reached out to Geiger in order to explore potential reasons behind the source of oxygen. Geiger had previously conducted research that revealed the ability of rust, 
when exposed to salt water to generate electrical energy. This led the researchers to speculate whether the polymetallic nodules found in the deep ocean could generate sufficient electricity to produce oxygen. This phenomenon is known as seawater electrolysis, which involves extracting electrons from the oxygen atoms in water. In order to explore this theory, Sweetman transported numerous pounds of the polymetallic nodules obtained from the depths of the ocean to Geiger's laboratory at Northwestern. Additionally, Sweetman made a trip to Northwestern in December of last year, dedicating an entire week to working in Geiger's lab. Seawater can be split with a mere 1.5 volts, which is equivalent to the voltage of a standard AA battery. The team made a remarkable discovery, observing surface voltages reaching up to 0.95 volts on individual nodules. Furthermore, when multiple nodules gather together, the resulting voltage becomes even more substantial, similar to the effect of connecting batteries in a series. Geiger revealed that a remarkable finding has been made. A natural geo-battery has been uncovered. This groundbreaking discovery could potentially provide a plausible explanation for the mysterious occurrence of dark oxygen production in the ocean. In light of this finding, the mining industry is being urged by researchers to take this discovery into account when making plans for deep sea mining operations. Geiger emphasizes that the vast amount of polymetallic nodules present in the clarion clipperton zone alone could satisfy the global energy demand for many years. However, Geiger cites past mining endeavors in the 1980s as a warning example. During their visits to sites that were previously mined in the 1980s, marine biologists made a disheartening discovery. Not even bacteria had managed to make a comeback in these areas. On the other hand, unmined regions were teeming with marine life. The persistence of these dead zones for such a long period of time remains a mystery. Nevertheless, this finding raises significant concerns regarding the viability of seafloor mining strategies, as nodule-rich areas of the ocean floor boast a greater diversity of oceanic fauna than even the most diverse tropical rainforests. To support our channel's growth and ensure broader awareness, kindly hit the like, share and subscribe buttons. This will help us reach more individuals and disseminate valuable information. Thank you in advance.